Hello, welcome back to Danganronpa IF. So Monokuma has set up his final uh, exam for everyone, I guess. Consisting of a gauntlet of exploding Monokumas. And uh, it seems that Mukuro is the one who has volunteered to step up and to attempt this. So, let's see how it goes. As soon as the graduation exam started, the mastermind focused her control entirely on the Monokuma holding the escape button and completely synchronized her field of vision with it. She knew what was, go what was gonna happen next. She could predict what her sister Mukuro would do in this exact situation. Where she would choose to focus her superhuman skill with weaponry. And so, in, and so through Monokuma's eyes, she watched the scene unfold exactly as she predicted. A pointed metal bar burst through the explosions, heading straight for the weak point of the Monokuma holding the escape button. Specifically, it was aimed for the point where the bomb's detonation system and Monokuma's power source overlapped. It flew straight and true as if been fired by a master archer. In order to bring despair to Monokuma, and by extension Junko as well, the super soldier known as Mukuro Ikusaba threw the pipe like a spear so it could attack the same weak point she pierced in the nurse's office. As explosions filled the hallway until only fire remained visible, the spear's speed and precision as it soared to its target defied all human logic. But the mastermind knew. She knew Mukro used her power to fill the world with despair. Power was all that disappointing girl had. But that power was useless against Monokuma. The mastermind predicted that Mukro would put all her effort into that throw, and Monokuma caught the metal bar perfectly between his hands. The force of the throw knocked Monokuma back several yards, but the point end of the bar never pierced through his chest. Well, that was disappointing. The mastermind turned to look at a different monitor. She wanted to see the look on Mukuro's face when she realized that she failed to strike Monokuma. The despair of seeing the final Monokuma explode right before her eyes, completely obliterating the escape button. She wanted to sear this memory of her disappointing sister's final moments as her newfound hopes sank into a dark pit of despair. On instinct, she turned her camera to the surveillance camera that hadn't been destroyed, but instead of seeing Mukro and the others, she only saw Sakura, who looked as though she had finished launching an attack. She only thought it was strange for one second, but then the hopelessly powerful mastermind completely understood the situation and shifted her point of view to Monokuma. But because of that single second, Junko would feel just a pang of despair. Three seconds left. Amid the smoke, flames, and heat encircling the hallway, it burst through with the speed of a cannon shell. It glared at Monokuma with hot, boiling eyes that betray the icy expression on its face, and then, sharply, swiftly, strongly, it transformed into a living weapon that cuts through everything, revealing its true form in that hall of despair. Two seconds. Monokuma, who was still holding the metal bar in his hands, tried to move, but at that exact moment, the living weapon carved a path through the flames and appeared before him. Its body, which had never been wounded on any battlefield, was sustaining all sorts, all manner of burns and injuries. But even so, it didn't falter. The fire in its eyes never flickered once. One second. The living weapon, Mukuro, slammed her knee into the back of the metal bar Mukuro Monokuma was holding. The sharp tip of that metal bar pierced through Monokuma like a rail spike, shredding the detonator and its power source to pieces. Time's up. The 100 explosions ceased and smoke blanketed the hallway. Mukuro had dived into Monokuma and the pristine escape button now rested in her hand. She and the other students of Hope's Peak Academy had passed the graduation exam. It was only a small amount of despair. Monokuma had tasted it in only three seconds. 
Junko. Mukuro looked down at Monokuma. He could no longer move or self-destruct. When she spoke to him, a static-filled voice emitted from his mouth. It seemed his communication functions still worked. <laughs> I never expected you to do that. It still sounded like Monokuma. It seemed his voice modulator was unharmed as well. I must have overest... I must have overestimated you. I never thought you'd need anybody's help on the battlefield. When I give the signal, please launch me forward with a roundhouse kick. Mukuro whispered those words to Sakura just before the explosion started. After Mukuro threw the metal bar, she jumped into the air at the exact moment Sakura unleashed a roundhouse kick. Right when Sakura's foot made contact with her own, Mukuro used the force generated by her kick to propel herself at Monokuma. Using the ultimate martial art of superhuman attack like a springboard, she shot herself through the air like an artillery shell. Enduring intense heat, shrapnel, and blood-draining G-force, she stayed conscious as she charged through the hallway engulfed with explosions in despair. Mukuro trusted Junko. She trusted Junko to predict that she'd throw the metal bar and catch it accordingly. Then she tried to look at her face as the despair set in. The Junko and Ashima Shinu would definitely do that. Although Mukuro hadn't predicted that her sister would try to kill her with the spears of Gungnir, she had a better understanding of her actions now. As Mukuro stared Monokuma in his face, all he could do was laugh scornfully. You put yourself, your life in someone else's hands for a deadly battle? I don't know how I feel about that. You'll always be a half-assed disappointment. I guess this time I'll just say I lost because I didn't see this much disappointment coming. The end. The end. Mukuro shook her head at Monokuma. No. You're wrong, Junko. Huh? If you want to talk about winning or losing, I think we lost before we even started. Mukuro's eyes shifted from side to side as if she was unsure of something, and she fidgeted in place as she continued to talk. No matter how much despair they felt, you didn't think they'd kill each other the way they were before. That's why you erased their memories. They aren't like the others you forced in the past. You knew these students would never do it. So have they done this? Did, did they do this before with a different group then? That's what you believed, isn't it? What are you talking about? So, um, it's okay, Junko. I'll bring back everyone's memory someday, and I'll show you everyone's happiness and their bonds. I'll show all that to you, and fill you with even more despair. Mukuro nodded after she said this, as if to cheer her sister up. After several seconds of silence, Monokuma responded. You finally beat me at this one time, and that lame speech is the best you can do? You're such a disappointment. You never fill me with despair. It's just constant disappointment. After pouting like a sore loser, Monokuma continued to speak in a neutral tone. But you guys will be back. And when that time comes, I'll invite you guys to a wonderful place. I found about... I found out about this fun island while I was running things here. <laughs> Wouldn't happen to be called Jabberwock Island, would it? Monokuma's laughter filled the room before the static finally cut out, and his remains fell silent. He wouldn't be talking again anytime soon. The mastermind was already preparing a new despair to bring to the world and to the students of Hope's Peak Academy. Junko included. In the end, the mastermind stayed in her Monokuma personality, persona, till the very end, and Junko and Ashima never showed her face again. It was as if she resented the despair Mukuro had given her. That thought almost filled Mukuro with despair. But when she heard her classmates calling for her, she sealed that despair into the depths of her heart. From now on, she would seal away all her despair. And one day, when she and she could give Junko the perfect despair. 
she'll unleash all the despair she stored and plunge with her sister into a dark abyss. I won't leave my little sister alone. In the end, that was the first hope the disappointing older sister had felt since she was a child. Several hours later. Muko, are you really Muko, are you really gonna go out wearing that wig? After receiving a blood transfusion of the correct blood type, Makoto was beginning to show signs of recovering. Mukuro, holding her wig to disguise herself as Junko and Ashima, nodded. If I live as Junko, I might be able to understand her better. Despite that, Mukuro's voice still sounded like her own, as if she hadn't fully decided. And I've made up my mind. While I'm out there, I've decided I'll accept everyone's hatred toward me, and toward Junko. I can't die until I've destroyed all the despair that Junko has spread. The damage that ultimate despair inflicted upon the world could not be measured in terms of money, culture, or even human life. Television broadcasts had already been begun informing people that Junko and Ishima and Mukuro Ikusaba were the heart of ultimate despair. Among the survivors in the outside world, there are still people who hadn't been tainted by despair yet. Regardless of the fact that she released Makoto and the others, to those, sur to those survivors she was nothing more than the reason the world ended. And to the terrorists wearing Monokuma masks who continued to ravage the world, Mukuro was nothing but a traitor. She was now in the hopeless situation of being enemies with most of humanity. But Mukuro wasn't making a big deal out of it. I'm going to try not to kill anyone who comes after me for revenge. Wouldn't it be safer to just turn yourself in? wondered Yasuhiro. Well, you might just get executed instead. But you could live to be an old lady if, you're, if your trial keeps getting pushed back. Mukuro slowly shook her head at Yasuhiro. Laws, justice, those things no longer exist. It, is it really that bad out there? Maybe we should all just stay in here. Yakuya glared at Yasuhiro with contempt. Ignorant idiots, just shut up. Your fate won't change whether you stay in here or not. Though he was shocked to learn the, Tog the Togami Corporation had been destroyed, Yakuya continued to remain firm and proud, even toward Mukuro. You're a rare asset, continued Yakuya, so I'll let you live for now. Depending on your actions, I may consider forgiving your crimes after I build a new world. Only a Togami would boast that they're capable of forgiving the crime of ending the world. You don't need to do that. I don't plan on just surviving. After turning away from Byakuya, Mukuro looked at the other students. Everyone's reacting in their own way. Kyoko had a look of quiet preparation. Toko, having just changed back from Genocide Jack, was panicked and confused. Mukuro looked back on the two years she spent with them then turned to Makoto, who shared the same memories as her and gave him the escape button. Makoto, you press it. Huh? Me? I think it's better if you press it instead of me. As she watched Makoto accept the button with some hesitation, Mukuro thought about what Monokuma had said. You guys will be back. Mukuro knew that Monokuma was telling the truth. After all, the file the students needed to fully restore their lost memories remained hidden in the academy. The research notes of Yasuke Matsuda, the ultimate neurologist. His research is the key to restoring everyone's memories. Even if the students no longer have their memories, they may be able to repair the bonds they have built among themselves over the last two years. But as long as their memories remain unrestored, the mastermind could still repeat her deadly plan. Although the island mentioned earlier sounded strange, the students could not turn their backs on the despair facing them. Then, let's go. Makoto remembered everything that was happening in the outside world. The boy who had chosen to remain inside the academy two years ago was now choosing to leave. How much did he struggle to come to that decision? 
but he was determined to face the despair awaiting him outside and hid his internal conflict from the others. By protecting Makoto's hope, Mukuro would bring despair to her beloved sister. But she no longer knew if the end result of her goal would lead to hope or despair. She pulled the wig over her head and hid her face with her hands. Was she smiling because hope was waiting for her? Or was she crying because her path would lead to despair? When she lowered her hands, her face was devoid of emotion. Mukuro no longer knew what expression she would wear on her face. At the same time, Makoto pressed the escape button. A siren began to wail as the turrets retracted into the ceiling. From beyond the heavy door, a bright light appeared. An infinite number of ifs and all the possibilities contained therein encased the world. Accepting everything, hope, despair, and even the feelings of that disappointing girl, Mukuro Ikusaba. All right, that was um, that was Danganronpa IF. Very very interesting little uh, little side bonus. Albeit albeit non-canon, but still more 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 fanficy. Albeit albeit unofficial one since since it's conclu included with uh, the second game, but. I, I like I like how it does give us a look at at a character that you know was was killed off very early in the first game before we get a chance to know her very well and give us a give us give us a look of what could have happened and even you know pretty much a much better ending for most of the people involved too not not nearly as bittersweet as the as the actual ending. Um, with that, I guess that is it for for this one. I will see you guys as I start. Um, I think next I want to start on uh, Alter Despair Girls. So uh, I will see you then. I'm playing a game.